Hey guys, this is part two of our binomial set of videos. This is going to be going over how to approximate a binomial when not all the conditions are met, and sometimes they won't be. But we have a, a little workaround we're going to learn today. So let's get started. Let's talk about drawing marbles out of a bag. So in our first draw, we have out of a bag of 20 marbles, 16 being red, the probability that you select a red marble is going to be 16 out of 20. Now, if we're going to draw five marbles without replacement, then those probabilities are going to change. So 16 out of 20 times 15 out of 19 times 14 out of six, 18 times 13 out of 17 times 12 out of 16. And that probability, if you multiply all those together using the multiplication rule, will yield you about 0.2817337, blah, blah, blah. So about 28.17%. Now let's compare that to what a binomial situation would be if we were to sample them with replacement. So if we were doing with replacement, if we're talking about all of them being red, then we're talking about 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. That gets you about 0.8 to the fifth power, which is 32.77. So we're off by about four, uh, four and a half percent or so, which is, it's, that's a pretty significant amount. So you would not want to use a binomial setting in this situation. But what would happen if you had 100 marbles in the bag? You still have that 80% chance. In this case, it would be 80 out of 100 times 79 out of 99 times 78 out of 98 and so on. And so you get your five red marbles. This ends up being about 31.93%. So if you remember the percentage from before, that was about 32.77. We are closer. We're less than a percent off. So that's not too bad. Still not great, but definitely a lot closer. So when you have a bigger sample to pull to pull from, it seems like it's not going to be as big of a deal. What about a thousand? Well, a thousand, you're going to get about 32.68%, which is, I mean, within the margin of error, I would say. So it's pretty darn close uh, to 0.8 to the fifth power. So with that, I would be comfortable saying, hey, we can use a binomial to approximate it. So the rule really is 10%. If you're sampling from less than 10% of your population, uh, that's gonna get you by and be able to use a binomial uh, probability situation. And binomials are really nice because they're quick. They're easy to use. We have calculator formulas for them. So we wanna be able to approximate them if we can. So you can approximate a binomial setting if your sample size is small compared to your population size. And the stats gods say about less than 10%. So we stick with that 10% condition, we'll be all right. Uh, just a little notation wise, when you see a little uppercase N, that's your population value and you see a little lowercase n that's your sample. So sample population. So do a little check your understanding to close off this video. Um, go ahead and try it on your own and you can pause the video, unpause it when you think you've gotten a shot at it. And we're going to do it in three, two, one. Here we go. In a survey of 500 U.S. teenagers aged 14 to 18, subjects were asked a variety of questions about personal finance. One question asked whether teens had a debit card. Suppose that exactly 12% of teens age 14 to 18 have debit cards. We're going to let X be the number of teens in a random sample of size 500 who have a debit card. Part A says, explain why X can be modeled by a binomial distribution, even though the sample was selected without replacement. Well, it has to do with your sample size. We're talking about U.S. teenagers. 500 seems like a large sample, but there are millions of U.S. teenagers to sample from, aged 14 to 18. So since our sample size is far less than 10% of the population, we're going to be okay using a binomial situation, even though technically we've broken the independence rule. So let's look at how to calculate that. Using a binomial distribution to estimate the probability that more than 59 teenagers in the sample have debit cards. So with more than 59, remember that is X is greater than 59, you are going to be using binomial CDF here since we're looking at a, a cumulative value. And remember, CDF doesn't go above 59. Or it doesn't, doesn't go above a number. It has to go less than or equal to a number. So you have to think about what that less than or equal to complement would be. Have you thought about it? We have our binomial setting 500 and 0.12 as the probability. What's the complement? Less than or equal to 58. So if we do one minus the probability of less than or equal to 58, 
we can get the probability of more than 59. So let's put that in our calculator. This is going to be a binomial CDF, second bars, binom CDF. We have, how many trials is that? That is going to be 500. Ooh, that's a lot of trials. 500 trials. And our probability is 0.12. And we're going to put 58. Remember, it's going to count 58, 57, 56, all the way down to zero and add them together. You'll get about 42.48%. Now, remember, this question wants to know the probability of greater than 59. So what are we going to have to do with that number? That's right. We're going to subtract it from one. So you should get about 57.52% in this problem. Here's the work. It's a binomial CDF, less than or equal to 58. What you have here is what you should write down when you're doing this work. You're not going to use the binomial formula. That's way too much to use a formula. But you have to write your inputs from your calculator. Don't just write binomial CDF with some numbers, comma, number, comma, number. Put the whole word for your input to get credit, including this less than or equal to. Don't just put equal. So anyway, you're going to get 4.4248. You're going to subtract that from 1, and you're going to get 0. 0.5752. Well, that about wraps up this video. It was pretty short, but I wanted you to see that 10% condition in action. So again, you can approximate a binomial setting if your sample size is small compared to your population size. Always look to see if it's less than 10%. Now, if they don't give you what the population size is, but it says it's a large population, um, then Usually in that case, we're safe to assume that our sample size is going to be less than 10%. Y'all, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you on the other side.